eating. New Orleans is a gourmet's dream. Oh, and I'm so hungry. Hi, James Mingvid. I'm hungry and I'm thinking about eating, and I'm sure you do too. After all, eating is a natural thing. But in your experience of what you've been taught, I'm sure you've been told words like delicious, eating, and that's about it. Hey, the world's a big place and a rich place. So why don't we give you a rich vocabulary and give you, uh, you know, some native speaker speak on eating. Are you ready? Let's go to the board. So I'm looking at a book. I say, oh, what's this? Time to pig out, Mr. E? It's not time to scarf down some pizza and beer. We got work to do. And I'm sure you're going, scarf? Why scarf? We'll find out. On the board, we have how to talk about eating. Simple enough. Chew, swallow. No, not so simple. Like in every country, there's a way to speak about things. And I want to give you a good, uh, good introduction or to our eating lexicon, which is dictionary. We're going to go from a little to a lot. And I'll give you the words that we might use and explain each one. And you'll notice there are some pictures here. So I will give you the number with each picture. Some won't have pictures, but hey, that's life. Suck it up, baby. So the first one, nibble. I want you to imagine a mouse. Do mice eat a lot? No, they eat a little bit, just a little food, okay? Now nibble can be a noun, as in the amount of food you eat, or a verb. And it means to eat just a little bit, okay? And that's our first one, nibble. Think of a mouse. A mouse nibbles its food, has a little bit of food. Graze is number two. Grazing is funny. You kind of eat a lot, but you don't. Huh? Well, when you graze, think of cows. You see the cow? Woo! It's moving through. Moves over here. Moves over here. It eats a little bit of everything. Or as I like to say, when I go to people's houses and I don't know if the food is good, I just graze. I try a little and I move on. <laughs> try a little. I move on. I might stay in a place where I like that, okay? Cows graze. Funny enough, men don't really graze. Women graze more than men. Uh, they do it because they eat. No, I'm having fun. I'm enjoying myself. I'm going to try this, 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 this. Men just want to boom, belt it down. So the graze is to move and eat a little bit of food at a time. We usually do this at buffets or with foods we're not sure of. Like I'm just going to graze a bit, okay? And you see the cow? There's Bessie. Graze. So when you see people eating a little bit of food and moving around and keep coming back to the same food, they're grazing, not really eating. Numero uno. Uno, did I say uno? See, I don't speak Spanish. That's why I shouldn't. Number three, bite. You know a bite as... Yeah? Yeah, easy, right? I'm oh, sorry, I should say graze is a verb before I forget there. Graze is a verb. Bite. A bite. Now, notice a bite is singular in this case. A bite is interesting because it's a medium amount of food, and it's a noun. When you go for a bite, you want some food. When we talk about nibble, I said cheese. I should have actually said, think nibbling is on peanuts, chips, maybe a cookie or two. I just want to nibble, not a lot of food. Remember the noun? When you go for a bite to eat, you want something like a hot dog. You go, okay, I get it. No, no, you don't get it. I want just a hot dog, or I want a slice of pizza or I want a hamburger, but I don't want a salad, I don't want dessert, I just want something more than a nibble, more than chips, but I'm not a full meal. I don't, I don't have the time or I'm not that hungry. So when you go for a bite, some people might go, they won't even go for a donut. Like a donut would be something to nibble on or just eat, but a bite would be a hamburger, hot dog, something like that. Big, but not too big, because it's a medium amount of food, all right? So I'm going to go for a bite. And look here, there's a mouth. Huh? There you go. Bite. Don't forget to get a bite, okay? I might even say as an idiom, I'm going out for a bite. Do you want something? If you go, yeah, give me a salad plus this. I'm going, Dude, I'm going for a bite. You want a meal? Go by yourself. That's way too much food. Number four, munch. Munch. Well, munch. It sounds like something, right? Think of a Coke can. When you crush it, it makes a sound. Crunch, munch. M sounds for middle. Munching is like nibble, but you have a bit more food. So nibbling is a small amount of food for a mouse. When you're munching on something, here's the thing about munching. First, it's not going to be one little thing. It might be a few carrots and some celery, but here's what's going to get to you. You know, man, I can hear that guy munching from all the way over here. It's sound. 
munch and crunch. Then crunch the can, munch with your mouth. You hear the sound from over there. Usually makes you upset, okay? So when somebody's munching on something, you go, what is he munching on? How do you know? You can hear it. So crunch the can, sound, munch with the mouth. And it won't be two or three peanuts, it'll be more, okay? So munch for medium and sound. Rumbling. At night, sometimes it's raining or in the day, and thunder and lightning, right? Comes that. So there's a big sound. Have you ever sat down in a room from somebody, like E right now, and you're, you're like, is there somebody in there? You say, my stomach's rumbling because I'm very hungry. We're now moving from medium to more. Like you're more than just hungry. You're not a little hungry. You're almost getting very hungry. So your tummy starts to rumble or your stomach. Tummy is for children and ladies. My tummy is rumbling. Stomach is for men or macho people. Our stomach's rumbling. It means I'm hungry. It's making sounds. Okay. So if you see this, here we go. Rumbling. Think of thunder. That big noise. Right? Rumbling. Scarf. Look at E. He is eating a pizza and drinking beer. The whole meal cost him $2. Trust me, you don't want $2 pizza and beer. It'll make you sick. But it's very cheap. It's inexpensive. Not a lot of money. Scarf it down. Imagine a scarf. You know, in the winter in Canada, we wear scarves to keep our necks throat warm. When you scarf something down, you take the food and you just take it right down. Right down your throat. The throat and the neck are the same area. I mean, sometimes you don't even swallow or chew. And where's my word chew? See, we munch, we look at scarfing, scarfing, and these words here, no chewing. Chewing is with your teeth. When you scarf down the pizza, usually you just, <coughs> yeah, man, you didn't even chew your food. You just swallow <coughs> like a snake. <laughs> yeah, I did, right? So when you scarf it down, we do, sometimes don't even chew the food, and it's usually cheap. So scarfing, hmm, this is an interesting. You can say, I, was scar I scarfed down the pizza, that's okay. It tells me you were very hungry and you ate or drank very quickly. If you say Mr. E scarfed down the food, I think he's an animal. It's not a compliment. You know, he's scarfing down that food. You're saying he's acting in a way that might send him to the hospital, right? See, E told you, don't scarf that food. Cheap beer and pizza will get you in trouble, right? So no scarfing, scarfing is not good, okay? Chew your food. Remember chew? Very good. All right. Scarf and devour. Devour means to eat something completely. Sorry, that arrow is in the wrong place. So when we go here, leaving nothing. Scarfing and devouring are almost the same. Do you want to know the big difference? Yeah. When you devour something, you're saying two things. A, it is delicious. And B, it is expensive. If somebody says to me, hey, I devoured that cake. Cake is sweet and nice, it's delicious. It makes sense why you would devour the cake. If you said you scarfed it, I would think you were eating in a hurry. So generally, you'll hear, here's a perfect example. I went to a cheap pizza place the other night and I had, uh, you know, I, had, I scarfed down a pizza and some beer, it was like 10 bucks. You will never hear that same person say this. I went to a fancy Italian restaurant the other day. The pasta was divine. I devoured it. That's what they'll say. They will never say, the pasta was divine. I scarfed it down. Anybody hearing that who speaks English is like, <laughs> what's wrong with that guy? So am I saying money makes a difference? Well, it's really about if it's expensive and it tastes really good or it tastes good, we'll say devoured. You devour your mother's food. You don't scarf it down. If you scarf it down, it's because you have to run out of there. But you would never say, Mom, I'm scarfing your dinner. It's not polite. But if you're in a pizza joint or eating a hamburger or a hot dog off the street, I scarfed it down. I was starving. Everybody understands. The other thing is, scarf is usually used by younger people, teenagers and that. Okay? Cool. So we got scarf and devour, and we're on the, a lot. We're eating a lot now. Starving. You usually scarf food down and devour it because you are starving. What does starving mean? You know hungry. I'm hungry. I'm a little hungry. I'm very hungry. Starving is this. Food, now! No conversation. Food, gone. That's why I scarfed it, or I devoured it, because I need food now, right? So 
you got hungry, we already know. Now we're going to give you a new one, starving, which means I'm so hungry, I don't want to talk. Give me my damn food now. Are we good? I think we've almost done all these. Ready? Time to pig out. Well, in a second, I just want to do something before we go there. Okay, so it's not time to pig out now. Chill with your cheap beer. Gulp, swallow, spit. You'll notice I have on the board here, eat and drink. I want to do drink a little later, but today we're going to finish off with, there are some words that you can eat and drink and we use the same words or verbs with them, okay? By the way, this is called a Venn diagram and it shows you what is common. And these are common. A gulp, if you have a drink of something and you, that's a gulp. You can also gulp down your food. If you're gulping the food, you're probably not chewing. You're probably just, gulping it down. You take air in with the food you gulp. Sometimes you, when you're done, which is called a burp, because you gulped, took in too much air with the food. Swallow is this, down my throat, you take medicine, you swallow. That's to put it down. And spit is this, spit out. Give you a great example before we go to the next board. Mr. E, when I were out, were partying, Mr. E finished drinking and he couldn't find a place to pee. So he peed in a bottle and put it in the fridge. I don't know why. I don't know why he did it. Anyway, I woke up the next morning, went to the fridge, took out the, I thought, water. <laughs> it was really pee. And I gulped it down. But before I could swallow it, I knew it was pee. So I <laughs> spat or spit, spat is the pasta spit. I was spitting it out. E, what is wrong with you? <laughs> no, it's still not time to pig out. End of the story? I don't think so. Alrighty then. We are going to go through just a couple of, well, I did eating and I gave you things like chew and swallow and whatnot. Um, just for some fun. I mean, it's a little bit extra. Just want to give you through some animal idioms for eating because when we eat, um, we are animals after all, but we usually tend to use the animals to emphasize what we think. Emphasize makes make stronger what's going on. So I give you five of them just to play with for a little bit. And we've got a bird, and well, we've got a dog. I stopped drawing because really, I'm not good at it. But I got a dog, if you're going, what is that? It looks like a turd. Don't ask me what a turd is, okay. Yeah, that's a turd with legs. Uh, the pig, yeah, it looks like my sister. No, it doesn't look like my sister. I love you. I'm not even gonna say her name. A bird, a horse, and a wolf. A wolf is like a big dog in case you don't know what it is. It's like a, a dog that's not been domesticated. That's not a wolf or it, it's just the idea of think of dog. All right, so let's start small. Eat like a bird. This one is actually what we call an oxymoron. Oxymoron means the two words really don't really go together because birds are supposed to, you know, eat like a bird. Birds are small, not eat a lot. In reality, they eat a lot. But when we say someone eats like a bird, we mean they don't really eat. Maybe one cookie, one peanut, not very much. They eat like a bird. That's why they're so slim, okay? The opposite of eating like a bird is to pig out, dude. Well, he's gone, but he was wanting to pig out. He wanted to eat, 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 eat like a pig. Pigs are known to eat anything and eat a lot and eat all the time. So if you're a bird, you don't eat a lot of food. If you're a pig, you eat all the time. If you make a pig of yourself, it means you're embarrassing yourself because you're eating so much that now people are looking at you and staring. They might even charge money to watch the animal eat the food. So don't make a pig of yourself, okay? So, you know, two, three slices, okay. 10, 20, eh, problem. Dog's breakfast. If you have a dog, I don't need to explain. If you don't have a dog, I will. Dogs are not known for being very tidy or neat or eaters. You know, they don't cut their food and eat slowly. It's all over the place. So when somebody tells you it looks like a dog's breakfast, it's very messy, very disorganized. Okay. Horse. When you eat like a horse, it means to eat a lot of food. It's similar to pigging out. There is a difference. When you eat like a bird or eat like a horse, they're exact opposites. You eat like a horse, you eat all the time. You like to eat a lot. You're a very good eater, let's say. When you eat like a bird, you don't eat a lot of food all the time, okay? So those are what that means. Now, so we got these two as being opposite, right? Eat like a bird and eat like a horse. When I said pig out, it's because you're eating maybe one time you're eating like this, 
Sorry, I forgot to put dog's breakfast because the breakfast belongs to the dog. Sometimes we get that. Um, but yeah, picking out, you're going to say, aren't they the same? I go, no, these two are like normal behaviors. You eat like a bird. You don't eat a lot all the time. Eat like a horse. You eat a lot all the time. When you pig out, it's maybe a one-time thing. Tonight, I'm going to pig out on spare ribs. I don't always eat a lot, but I'm going to eat pig out now. When I make a pig of myself, I'm making it embarrassing. I'm eating so much of the rib juice. It's all in my face, on my hair. It's embarrassing. Dog's breakfast is when it looks bad. Like you put the food down, you're like, ugh, that looks like a dog's breakfast. It's not good to look at, okay? Wolf down. See how we got dogs and wolf? I don't know why. Wolf down. Remember we talked about swallowing and gulping? When you wolf it down, you don't chew. You're like, you're wolfing it down like a savage animal. <laughs> All right, so we got a cool few animal idioms you can spring on your friends now, right? I eat like a bird, that's why I look so good. But I'm always working out, so I have to eat like a horse. Okay. How about a quiz? Because you know we have a big quiz, but I want you to do this quiz first and see what you've learned. All right, so the first one we want to do is this. I was at an excellent Italian restaurant, and I something the meal. Did I mention excellent also means... Expensive. Hopefully that helps you. That's right. You got it. I devoured. Devoured it. Yeah. Devoured the meal. Okay. You devoured the meal. What about this one? We were at a cheap pizza joint and I something a whole pizza. Hmm. It's not winter, but I sure could use something if I was cold. I'll give you a hint. I knew you'd get it. Scarfed down. Remember we talked about scarfing down pizza and beer? from cheap places, because this one is no money, that's a lot of money. There's the difference, okay? Two more to go, and if you can do this, I can just imagine what you're going to do on the quiz. I'm going out for a... I don't know. You tell me. Mm -mm -mm. What do you think? Could it be a bite? Remember? When you go out for a bite. Think bite, bit. A little bit of food, right? I'm going out for a bite. Do you want something? I'll get you some food too. And finally, think Coke can. Mm -hmm. Go with your hunch. Yeah. I could hear you munching over here. Remember? Hunch, crunch, munch, making sound. So you can hear... It's not a dog's breakfast, but it sounds like a dog. So how did you do? Did you get four out of four? If not, watch the video again. And if so, I challenge you to go to www.ing.com as in English, vid as in video dot com, where you can do the rest of the quiz and take some other quizzes while you're at it and watch some other videos. By the way, as always, thank you very much for coming back. Don't forget to subscribe, okay? Anyway, I'll see you. I'm out. That was a lot to swallow. I don't think I can do any more. But if you're starving for more knowledge, you know where to go.